1980, Congressman Dan Rostenkowski was at the peak of his power. He had taken over as the Democratic Chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, which is when I produced a documentary with and about him. He was a complicated guy who told it the way he saw it and did what he said he would do. Rosti was a great legislator who could compromise with the Republicans and get legislation passed. He never lost sight of his roots in Chicago and lived his whole life in the house that his grandfather built, which was then the northwest side of Chicago and now is really Bucktown. He served in Congress for 36 years until he was indicted and he pled guilty on two counts of mail fraud. He served 15 months in federal prison, two months in a halfway house, and was pardoned, a full pardon, by President Clinton in the year 2000. To his dying day, Rosti thought that the matter should have been handled in the House of Representatives rather than as a criminal matter, which he really viewed as political, and many others did too. The chairman was gruff and fascinating, and as you'll see from the clip that follows, he was a genuine guy who let us see some of the inner workings of Congress. And for that, I am grateful, and I feel privileged to have known him. Now, let me tell you something. The philosophy behind running the government of the United States, particularly the House of Representatives, is that you put people on the committees, the three most important committees, well, four now, you put people on rules, on ways and means, on appropriations and budget. Now, those four committees pretty much dictate what's going to flow on the floor of the House of Representatives. And you've got to be able to take the hard shots in those committees. You've got to be able to vote, to vote sometimes in the best interest of your country as opposed to the constituent in your area. Dan Rostenkowski is genuine. Uh, there's nothing phony about him. That's where you got to start. When I think of Dan, I think of the old uh, Roman uh, words that uh, began our modern English words, sincere. They were two words, seen uh, serum, w without wax. And it meant that uh, uh, if you had stamped upon an article <laughs> that it was exactly what it pretended to be or appeared to be and that there wasn't anything phony patched up about it. Uh, and that's what I think about Dan, without wax. He's sincere. He's just what he appears to be. And the members know that. Hello. Nice to see you. Welcome to Washington. Oh, welcome to Washington. Take care of yourself. Okay. Let me introduce myself. I'm Danny Rustenkowski. I uh, represent the 8th District in the northwest side of the city of Chicago. I've been here for 22 years. I just met Jim Wright and Mo Udall on the uh, tram going to and from the, the Capitol, where I'm sure after uh, the 5th of January, you'll be aggravated with those bells just like we are. But uh, we work like hell to get here. And then when they get here, uh, you assume a great deal of ob great, great many obligations, and one of them is, I guess, to keep a fairly decent voting record. Because uh, if your papers are any like ours in the, the city of Chicago, uh, they look more at uh, your average than on the substantive issues that you're voting on. It's really the scheduling, and that's where, in this leadership ladder, I'm the whipping boy, and I have to try to influence my leader, Jim Wright, and Tip O'Neill on balancing a schedule so that we can get to and from our districts. So that when you make an appointment with somebody, that you won't embarrass them by not showing up. And it's, it's true, the probably most important thing you do in the first two years of service in, your con in Congress is getting yourself reelected, keeping a high profile, visible at all times, trying to let your people know the service that you're giving them. And that pretty much comes down to the little point that I'd like to make in my presentation. And that's your commitment to, to us, to the Democratic Party, to the philosophy that we represent. Tip O'Neill said it very well this afternoon. He'd never ask you to vote on any bill that would embarrass you, that would certainly cause, uh, cause you uh, some concern with respect to getting reelected. But you know, the game is compromised, that's politics. And so what we try to do is we try to put a piece of legislation together that's going to be comfortable in our platform and certainly in the program that we present. But you know, there are sometimes concessions that one has to make in order to get a program through. So that's, that's what we do. We try to get the numbers 
so that we can comfortably tell the leadership, the speaker and the majority leader, what those numbers are so that we can take it to the floor. We would solicit your support. We'll call and ask you. We'll try to get position papers. We'll try to, to give you, if you need the excuse for supporting legislation, to give you the excuse why you can support it. And that's important. It's going to be more important in the next two years because what we're going to try to do, and we're going to have to work at this feverishly, is rebuild the party to work with our fewer numbers against a lot of money that's easily accessible to the Republicans. So when you're solicited for a position on a, on a bill, I hope after you've looked at it, you can come up with, with an honest opinion and, and try, if you can, to give us votes because it's the whole program that's going to be necessary that we're going to try to have to reflect on in the future. So unless there are any other questions, I'll turn it over to my boss, Jim Wright. I got a call from President Johnson telling me that he had authorized the dollars uh, for, uh, for the, uh, the median strip surface line uh, out to Jefferson. And I was really excited about that. Uh, I, this is fantastic. And I remember him saying, yeah, you get this on the northwest side, I says, on the Kennedy. And Lyndon Johnson said, absolutely, that's, that's where it's going to go. So I called Dick Daly, and i excited. I says, geez, you know, it's fantastic. We're going to have uh, the surface transportation out to Jefferson Park on, on the Kennedy. And he said, really? I said, yeah. He said, the Kennedy, really? I said, yeah. Oh, so about 20 minutes later, I get a call from Lyndon Johnson. Lyndon Johnson says to me, uh, Dan, you know, I told you about that money for that highway in, the, in Chicago. I made a mistake. It's the Dan Ryan. I said, the Dan Ryan? What do you know about the Dan Ryan? He said, well, uh, we're, uh, I made a mistake. It's the, the, the median strip extension uh, for the surface lines is going to be on the, on the Dan Ryan. I said, oh, really? Is that a fact? He says, yeah. So I called Dick Daly back. I said, you just talked to Lyndon Johnson. Oh, no, Dan. No, no, no. He was, it was just a mistake. Well, what Daly wanted, naturally, is he wanted that extension out to Ryan so that it went out to 35th Street as opposed to, to Kennedy. So uh, the, the fact of the matter is that, uh, that uh, we got our money, uh, but it took about two more years. <laughs> I'm proud of the fact that when they talk about the 32nd Ward and Rostenkowski country, it's, it's really a pleasure because we do our job. We work in the venue. We aren't doing it just on election day or two weeks before. We're commuting with our, commuting with our, with our people in this community 365 days a week. Daly would call me and drop it on my doorstep, and then I would have to figure out what he's trying to do and then try and do it. And whenever Daly would say, well, I don't know about this, call Rostenkowski, that put me in the position of always saying, how did you become the leader? The leader is the fella that picks up the phone when the mayor is on the other end. That's the leader. I might say that it's really rewarding to visit the White House, to have breakfast with the president every Tuesday, and then come back to this community, a, cu a community that I've only been away from while in Washington on about 12 different weekends. Laverne just suggested that maybe I commute, and I've been doing that ever since. I've raised four daughters right in this community. Um, they're all in their 20s. Uh, Laverne's done a marvelous job of raising them. I was the absentee father. How long have I been saying to you, stay right here. This neighborhood is coming back. It's going to make the turn. And the only way that we can keep it is by you living here and working here. You know, I have four daughters, and every one of them played in this auditorium, as I did. I was born and raised where I live. The church that I attend uh, was is the oldest uh, 
Polish Catholic church in the, in the city. I think it's about 120 years old now. Um, the, the, the park that is across the street from where I live, my grandfather lived on the site of the park and then moved across Noble Street uh, to Noble and Evergreen, and then they erected the park. Mainly, I wanted my kids to be Midwestern oriented. I like the Midwest. I think that, I think that if there's a contrast, it's here in Illinois, Wisconsin, Missouri, Michigan. People want to tell you the way it is, and I, uh, I'd like my children to be raised under that umbrella. <clears throat> That's all.